Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD. And yes, Linux Mint 17 was released not too long ago. Uh, it looks like they released, I believe, the RC, the KDE version, as well as the XCFE version, which that version was actually released yesterday. Uh, I'm super excited. I've been playing around with it, but I want to show you guys the top three new features that I noticed with this new operating system. And number one in my list, guys, is Update Manager. Now, Update Manager now shows you more information. It's been redesigned. It runs a lot faster than the previous versions of Mint. Uh, no more reloading yourself into the root mode to use it, which is a huge plus. No more checking internet connection or waiting for the network manager to load, which was always a huge problem when I was testing out version 14. And locking the APT cache at startup was removed. So, oh, I, I, I pretty, I like that feature a lot. Another new feature that I noticed with Update Manager is a new column were added to tell the difference between traditional updates, security updates, backports, and Romeo updates. Now, history of updates, this feature shows all updates performed on the system, whether it's with the Update Manager or with the pseudo command of app get aptitude or even directly with a GDE BI or a DPKG command. The next one in my list is driver manager. Now driver manager was improved a lot, which I, I, I kind of like what, what they did with it. Now you're able to install drivers without a connection to the internet. Now when you're offline, the driver manager asks you to plug in your installation medium and proceed to mount it as a temporary package repository. That's the only thing that I kind of found new with the driver manager. Now, number three in my list is software sources. Now, software sources configuration to receive a huge improvement with the UI interface. A warning was added against the use of backport and Romeo components on the Linux Mint repository and a nice confirmation dialog box was added with the software sources. Now, like every operating system that comes out in the market for us to test out, there's always known issues. Now, for this particular operating system, there are some known issues that I read about and I kind of experienced myself. The number one is issues with Skype. If you're running a 64-bit operating system of Linux Mint into your environment, it looks like Skype is a huge problem. If you're experiencing any issues, remove it from your operating system and install the 32-bit version. Now, DVD playback with VLC player now if you are a huge VLC player which I am a huge VLC player um, it kind of doesn't recognize a DVD player at all so there I haven't found a workaround how to do it but if I do I will leave it at the bottom of the comment section and let you guys know how to fix that now another thing is if you're using a newer model of, of a laptop to install the Linux Mint on, onto uh, EFI is a huge problem uh, if you don't know with EFI, it's mostly done on a Windows 8 machine. Now, if your system is using a secure boot, you got to turn it off because most likely you won't be able to install this operating system into your brand new Windows machine, you know? Uh, so I, I kind of do that myself. If I get a new laptop that has Windows, I kind of wipe it clean and just put a new OS and I'm gonna, definitely going to be Linux because it's free and it works all the time. Not all the time, but it works the way it's supposed to work. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy these top three. I know there's a bunch more features of the new operating system of the Linux Mint 17. Uh, if you guys have any new features that you want to shout out, hey, leave them at the bottom of the comment section and let me know if I miss anything. And I'll catch you guys on the next top three. Peace out.